Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is March the 22nd, 2021. Let's talk about the rematch, Alexander Povetkin against Dylan White. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, let me just say, the casinos have Prevetkin as a greater than plus 200 underdog. In fact, he's going off at a plus 255. When will they learn? The bet I like is uh, I like Prevetkin to win. Give me a taste of the long odds. Hedged with white by KO. Let's talk about it. You know, there are a few reasons why I think Povetkin wins. What I also want to do is refer to the highlights of their first fight, where Povetkin hits the canvas twice before White hits the canvas for good. Right now, the reasons why I think Povetkin wins the fight is White, in my opinion, simply can't fight as fast. White is structured. He doesn't have Prevetkin's legs. I understand Prevetkin is much older, right? But this is the heavyweight division. You can be in your late 30s, early 40s and still be competitive. I think White is the more structured fighter I think that works to his disadvantage here. He can't fight as fast, he can't move as well. Let me also say too, that we know some things we didn't know before the first fight. One of them is that White cannot keep Povetkin outside. We'll show that on film later, or by reference to the film of the first fight later. Again, the highlights of the first fight is in my favorites folder here. I also believe that Povetkin knows the mistake he made the first fight that ended up with him getting dropped twice in that first fight. Finally, I firmly believe boxers are human too. They're just like the rest of us. They bleed like the rest of us. They have memories like the rest of us. I believe the memory of a devastating knockout less than a year ago stays with you in a rematch against the man who knocked you out. Now let's talk about styles. Dylan White to me is a poor man, Sonny Liston, right? He has a great jab. He has a straight right hand. He has some power, right? He calls himself the body snatcher because he's very effective in the pocket throwing body shots. He's an excellent counter puncher in the pocket, right? He chops you down. He doesn't finish you in the first round like Liston finished Floyd Patterson twice, right? He's not that kind of seek and destroy guy. Rather, who he is is a guy who hits you methodically with jabs and body shots, right? He is the master of that pocket area. And eventually a fighter withers, like Lucas Brown did, right? By the way, I thought Lucas Brown was going to win that fight. I wasn't expecting that version of Lucas Brown to show up that fight night. But... Dylan White, when he gets it going, he's a guy who owns the middle rounds, right? He's able to leverage a great jab and boxing ability that surprises opponents, ring savvy that surprises opponents to his advantage. Now, by contrast, Alexander Povetkin, to me, is the better athlete. What do I mean by that? I mean, if Dylan White and Povetkin both wanted to get to a spot and you said go, I believe White gets there 
first. Excuse me. I believe Povetkin gets there first. I also think Povetkin moves a lot better, has ring coverage, is more sudden than Dylan White, can go to a plan B and a plan C much more quickly than Dylan White. I understand many people disagree with me. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Well, what I want to do now is to highlight the first fight. What you're going to see is that both knockdowns by Dylan White of Alexander Povetkin come off the same punch. Now, it's not White's great jab. And let me just point out, White's right-handed. It's not White's straight right hand. It's not White's right hook. No, Dylan White, who throws many punches on a counter left hook, knocks down Povetkin twice. On the telecast, the second knockdown, right? White starts with his hands like this. They call it an uppercut. I don't. An uppercut is when you come right down the middle. Right? You lean into it and you're coming from below. No, that second knockdown is the same punch as the first knockdown to me. Believe your own two eyes. Look at the film yourself. He throws it from down here, but it's a counter left hook. Right? That's the punch that frustrates, that drops Alexander Povetkin. Now, what I want people to do is to look at the moment right before the punch. You'll notice both times Povetkin is deep in the pocket, isn't he? And that's important because understand, Dylan White has a great jab. But Dylan White wasn't able to control distance like, let's say, Lawrence Acoli controlled distance in his championship fight last weekend. Right here, the ambush fighter. That's the fight style for Povetkin. He's outside, he jumps inside, he throws a combination. The combination might be predetermined. Right? It gives him a speed advantage on someone like White, who isn't trying to be the lead puncher, is actually trying to counter. So he's waiting for you to do something so you can counter, so he can counter you. Right? That's not Povetkin style. So understand, Povetkin does get hit with some jabs in this fight, but Povetkin's able to get by the jab. He's inside on Dylan White in a way that Glovaki was not able to get inside on Lawrence Okole. Right? So understand, I believe we know now that Povetkin can get inside on Dylan White. He did the first fight. It costs him because he can't box with Dylan White. In other words, he needs to come in the pocket, do what he's going to do, then leave the pocket. If you linger in the pocket, then that's Dylan White's game, just like it was Sonny Liston's game. So how does Liston lose the title? I believe this kind of fighter falls apart when faced with a guy who moved like Ali, right? If you can avoid Dylan White's jab, if you can slip Dylan White's jab, you throw off his timing. Understand, he's so deep in the pocket that Dylan White is hitting him with hooks using his jab hand. In other words, Povetkin's by the jab. So Dylan White, who has a pretty good left hook, that's obvious looking at the film of the first fight, where Povetkin hits the canvas twice, resorts to hitting him with his jab hands hook. So it's two counter left hooks, neither's a lead left hook. Right? Dylan White wants to outbox you in the pocket. So you know what happens. Povetkin, for the KO, 
does not come on Dylan White's left side. No, he goes over to Dylan White's right side. And that's where he again gets low. By the way, he's low on one of the left hooks that knocks him down. In other words, Prevetkin's game plan was to get low on Dylan White. We know that now looking at the film of the first fight. So, of course, he abandons Dylan White's left side, goes over to his right side, throws the uppercut, that ends the fight. Right? What I believe is going to happen here is Prevetkin is going to spend even less time in the pocket than he did the first fight. He's not going to come in the pocket and actually try to exchange with Dylan White. I believe he's going to be outside the pocket, then he's just going to pick half the pocket. And I'm telling you, the half of the pocket he picks is going to be White's right side. He's going to attack White from White's right side, right? White, to me, is going to have problems landing his jab, which, in my opinion, for White, is a timing mechanism. If you move on Dylan White, I believe Dylan White gets baffled. Let me say this, too. At the end of the Joseph Parker fight, a fight Dylan White won, Right? Dylan White was bone tired. He gets caught and dropped in that last round. Right? He's holding on to Joseph Parker like a guy would hold on to his girlfriend. Right? He is bone tired. Now, we just saw Pavetkin need late rounds against Michael Hunter. And Pavetkin, I don't care how old he is. Povetkin was able to summon the energy to get some late rounds against Michael Hunter to have that fight declared a draw. Right? I get the feeling Dylan White's going to come out. Ego's involved. You know the way it is. You forget how devastating the KO was until you're back in the ring with the guy. Right? Dylan White is going to want to show the world, hey, I was dominating the last fight. I was dominating it. I should have won. I got sloppy. This guy hit me with a lucky punch. So I believe Dylan White is going to try to stalk Alexander Povetkin. But understand, Dylan White relies on structure. Right? He's the guy driving the speed limit on the highway. He relies on structure. If the fight starts to get unstructured, well, that's Alexander Povetkin's forte, isn't it? So Povetkin's going to be roaming around. That's the way I look at it. Then he's going to come inside and he's going to throw some predetermined combination. Right? And understand, too, Povetkin can lead with power shots. So while Dylan White needs the jab as a timing mechanism, Alexander Povetkin can just come in and throw a right hand. Right? He can just come in, throw a left hand. He can just come in, use his feints as a timing mechanism, dip, throw an uppercut, get inside on Dylan White, and end the fight. I get the feeling, looking how low Povetkin was when he gets knocked down in the first fight, I get the feeling that Povetkin planned to attack Dylan White from down low. I get the feeling Povetkin had it planned. So he was on Dylan White's offhand side, passed his jab, and did not expect to get hit with very hard counter left hooks. Let me also say, too, one of the knockdowns, I believe it's the first knockdown, check the film on the first fight, right? I have the highlights again in my favorites folder. You'll notice Dylan White actually lands a straight 
right hand on Prevetkin. Which Prevetkin takes? Right? Prevetkin's defense isn't what it was five years ago. He's getting hit by obvious punchers, right? David Price. You remember that fight? He lands a straight right hand on Prevetkin, but Prevetkin takes it. It's the surprise counter left hook that completely surprises Prevetkin. He doesn't even have that blocked. He's surprised by it. So I believe his adjustment is going to be an adjustment a mover can make. A guy who moves around the ring as much as Prevetkin. He's going to be on the dominant side, the right-hand side of Dylan White. Right now, Dylan White, I'm not sure, can lead with right hands. Right? Understand, orthodox stance is right hands, his backhand. Let me say this, too. If Dylan White throws a straight right hand, that misses Prevetkin. If Prevetkin has trained to have that right hand miss him, Dylan White is going to be naked on that side. Right? You understand that. Because as a righty throwing that straight right hand, he's literally going to be moving toward his left. Right? You don't throw a right hand and then go right. So if Dylan White throws that right hand and is moving toward his left, that's going to make him be wide open. For a guy who can move around the ring, has the superior legs, right, and who fights faster than Dylan White. So I believe Prevetkin has some combinations planned for exactly that situation. Has some feints and has some, has some combinations, right? Dylan White's a guy who you start playing chess with him, he outthinks you. He beats you. I believe that Prevetkin is the guy who plans every move of the chess match before it happens. So he's outside, he bounces inside, he has a programmed combination. In my opinion, he's going to appear much faster than Dylan White. Let me say this too. I believe there was more chess than meets the eye in that first fight. I've seen Prevetkin's fights where he hardly gets hit with jabs. That first fight, Prevetkin, unless he's gotten old overnight, Prevetkin's getting hit with too many jabs. I got the feeling that that was a setup. Right? Boxing's a bit like poker. You're fighting a guy who throws a jab. Your real game plan is to slip the jab, go low, throw uppercuts. You want the guy throwing the jab. You want the guy's hand being extended. I got the feeling Prevetkin, who moves around the ring, allowed himself to get hit with some jabs last time. I don't expect that to happen in the rematch. Finally, let me say this too. We've all seen rematches where the guy who lost the first match, wins the rematch, right? Ali Leon Spinks. I'll just name one that comes to mind right now, right? But what I've found is that in rematches, the guy who won the first fight by stoppage now knows he has the power to knock out his opponent. Both guys have a realization on what happened that first fight. Now, understand the way that first fight ended. It wasn't controversial decision. We don't know who the judges were in that first fight, right? Rather, we saw Dylan White knocked out so cold that when he hits the canvas, the referee waves off the fight. That's how bad off he was. Now, all I'm saying is in the first fight, Dylan White may have been going forward thinking, well, I can take this guy's punch. After all, 
Didn't Michael Hunter go the distance with him? Well, now, as Povetkin faints, isn't Dylan White going to know that he could get knocked the F out? Don't those feints take on added significance? Povetkin faints like he's going to throw an uppercut. After I've been knocked unconscious the first time, the second time I'm going to be like, you know, hey, hey, no, no, no. You know, I'm going to be reading every feint where the guy might be throwing a power punch. Doesn't that qualitatively change the nature of the fight? Let me say this too. Why is this fight happening? Right, Dylan White was a mandatory contender for years. Well, you and I know why this fight is happening. It's because the heavyweight division right now is a closed shop, isn't it? Hell, Usyk can't get a shot on Anthony Joshua. Think about that. Right? Everything's a multi-fight deal now. Right? So, Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury, multi-fight deal. Everyone else is shot out. Right between the fights, Fury's fighting people like Otto Wallen. <laughs> right? Let's just say, let's just say between the fights, and that was a difficult fight for Fury. Between the fights, it wasn't like Fury said, hey, Usyk, let's go. Right? Didn't do that. He fought someone who was relatively unknown. So, Dylan White is an older fighter, not as old as Povetkin, but he's an older fighter. And he understands that unless he has mandatory status, he's not going to get a championship-level fight. You, the boxing public, should be a little bit outraged. Right? Now, I understand the reason for some of the delay. Right? This pandemic has drained arenas of crowds. There are legal protocols in place. No doubt, promoters want a packed house for a heavyweight unification match. Who could blame them? You talk with the fighters and you say, hey, I could pay you a few million dollars for a fight where nobody's watching, or I could give you a mint for a fight in front of 70,000 people. A lot of fighters will say, hey, you know what, I'll, I'll wait a few extra months for the mint. Right? I get it. But understand, when you see a situation like this, an older fighter running out of time, an older fighter who does not want to be passed over, right? These are the situations where fighters exercise rematch clauses that, simply put, might not be in their best interests. Right? I want you to just look at the end of the fight again. Look at how helpless on the canvas Dylan White looks. Look at how his eyes roll back into the back of his head when he gets hit with that uppercut. Right? I'm just telling you that I've seen many fighters after a knockdown like that more or less take a year off. Certainly when they come back in the ring, they're not fighting the guy who just knocked them out. Dylan White, who has a lot of bravado, who has a public persona, seems to have convinced casinos that he's ready for the rematch a few months later. I don't think he is. Right? I believe the fact that Povetkin got dropped off the same punch twice in the first fight hurts Dylan White. Do you really think Povetkin's going to be hanging around to get hit with the counter left hook in this fight? It's not going to happen. Also, I don't know how it helps you when the guy you're fighting knows he can knock you out. So, I'm sorry. I didn't understand the line in the first fight. As subscribers here know, I don't get the line in this fight. The casino's going to give me a plus 255 on the guy who won 
relatively early in the last fight by stoppage? Sign me up. I like the underdog here, Povetkin, to win, right? You're getting compensated for it. I'll hedge the play with White by KO. Let me also point out, too, that boxing is an expectation game. Right, the first time around with Povetkin coming off a very tough Michael Hunter fight that he may have lost, quite frankly, they gave him a draw. Okay, good, right? You know, Dylan White in a fight in the UK was supposed to make this a coronation, right? He was supposed to show us, hey, I should be fighting the Wilders, the Furies, the Joshuas, right? That's what he was supposed to be showing us. So you're watching the fight and, you know... Of course, Povetkin doesn't do anything to dispel that impression because he hits the canvas multiple times. I believe this time around, the expectations are different. Whether we acknowledge it to ourselves or not, we're looking at this fight and we're thinking to ourselves, well, how badly damaged was Dylan White in that last fight? Right, let's face it too. Dylan White has been in some fights where he's looked out of shape. You remember that fight against uh, Oscar Chavez or some name like that, where Dylan White looked like he hadn't completely trained properly. Well, his career was on the line for that fight too. Right, you get the feeling a lot's happening with Dylan White. I don't like the circumstances here. The fact that Povetkin used to be a heavyweight champ. The fact that Povetkin has fought people like Vladimir Klitschko in the past. The fact that I personally feel Michael Hunter is a serious threat to the heavyweight champions. And Povetkin recently fought him. Right? The fact that Povetkin beat David Price in the United Kingdom. The fact that he is a KG vet who's already beaten Dylan White by stoppage, has me surprised that he's this big an underdog. I like the underdog. I'll hedge to play with White by KO, but understand what that means. It means that with Dylan White's ranking on the line in a fight that he has to win in the United Kingdom, if this fight goes the distance and Dylan White wins a decision, you lose it all. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.